God's people had now divided into two kingdoms. In Judah, the southern kingdom, David's great-grandson Abijam became king. He went out to battle against Israel, the northern kingdom. He stood up on a mountain and said to Israel, The Lord God gave kingship to David's family, but you have rebelled. As for us, the Lord is our God, and he is with us. And God gave the soldiers of Israel into Judah's hand. They won, because they relied on the Lord, the God of their fathers. And King Abijam grew strong. But he didn't follow God with all his heart, like David had done. But he carried on the sins of his father Rehoboam. When Abijam died, his son Asa became the king of Judah. He did what was right and good in the eyes of the Lord. He cut down the foreign altars that had been built, and told the people to seek the Lord and keep his commandments. Zerah the Ethiopian came out to fight Judah with an army of a million men. King Asa cried to the Lord and said, Help us, O Lord, we rest on you, and in your name we go. So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians, and they fled away. God's Spirit came upon a man called Azariah. He said to King Asa, If you seek the Lord, you'll find him, but if you forsake him, he'll forsake you. Then Asa put away all the idols that were in the land, and repaired the altar of the Lord. And he gathered all the people together, and the people made a solemn promise that they would follow the Lord and be faithful to him. When Asa was older, the king of Israel built fortifications to stop people going in and out of Judah. King Asa sent gold and silver from the temple to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, and asked for his help. Ben-Hadad sent armies against the cities of Israel, and the king of Israel stopped building the fortifications. Then a prophet came to Asa and said, You have done foolishly because he trusted in Ben-Hadad instead of in the Lord. Asa was angry with the prophet and put him in prison. Later Asa had a disease in his feet, but instead of seeking the Lord, he sought help from men. And after reigning as king for forty-one years, he died. Meanwhile, in Israel, the northern kingdom, six wicked kings reigned after Jeroboam died. Nadab, Baasha, Elah, Zimri, Omri, and Ahab. They all did what was evil in God's sight, provoking him to anger with their idol worship. King Ahab was the worst of them all. His wife Jezebel worshipped the false god Baal, and Ahab started worshipping him too. He built a temple for Baal in Samaria, his capital city. And in Ahab's days, Jericho was rebuilt, a city that the Lord had said should never be remade. We learn from this that we should follow the Lord with all our heart, like Asa destroying the idols and being faithful to God. And we should rely on the Lord for help and salvation, like Asa when the Ethiopians came against him. But we also learn that we need a better king to come. Even Asa didn't trust God all the time, and all the kings of Israel were wicked. The only perfect king is Jesus Christ, God's Son.